Okay, so the last time we talked about California, we learned a lot, didn't we? We learned about the different areas to live in California and where you should move and where you shouldn't move. It's a big state, but there are some parts that are desirable. Way up here in the northern part of the state is really pretty and peaceful, as is along the central coast. There's also parts of Southern California that you could probably justify moving to. Places like Temecula, Santa Barbara, and San Diego, although these places are way too expensive for most people. We also learned which places are bad to live in California. It's basically here. The Central Valley is a dump. Anything in the LA area except parts of Orange County are a dump, and much of the Bay Area is an overpriced dump. And since that last video was published, there's been about a half million people who have moved out of California for good. And there's plenty more people behind them, I'll tell you that. But there's a lot more to California than just that. We didn't talk about some California history, interesting facts, and the issues that people in California face today. So that's what we're going to do in this video, kind of pick up where we left off in a more lighthearted way. Plus, we're going to actually talk to California residents who will tell you what it's like in that state and where you could move if you wanted to relocate there. But I highly recommend you do not relocate there. But it's time to get started now. It's time for Corner House Tales, California, the bankrupt state. California is so screwed, come here and you'll see why it's shitty and understand why they're leaving. Everyone is so broke and they're so busy, there's no time to sit down and relax. Move here and you will one day be so poor. For all the California news you need to know, I'm Skip Fritzman. Thanks Skip. So if you're moving to California, you need to know what's going on here, right? And if you live in California, you should know what's going on in your state too. Stuff like this. Okay, so everybody knows about California's many woes. It's an expensive, crowded, and very poorly managed state. One big problem the state's dealing with is the water supply. Will California run out of water one day? It's not out of the question. California's the largest consumer of water on the entire North American continent. But over time, droughts and wildfires have increased in frequency. They're less seasonal and more year-round. This state's interconnected water system is the world's largest, but it's also going to be one of the world's driest one day. These days, to avert a crisis, they're cutting back on the amount of water farmers can get, and residents have been asked to cut back on water usage by 20%. Some communities were told they could only use 55 gallons of water a day, which is just enough to fill a bathtub and flush the toilet seven times. A while ago, they predicted California would run out of water. Well, that didn't happen, and California's not going to run out of water, but they're going to run out of cheap water, and this state's already barely paying its bills. Now, wildfires are an issue this state has to deal with, too. For the last two summers now, all 18 national forests in California have been closed because of wildfires. And just this year, two of the biggest fires ever in this state history broke out. They're getting worse and worse here. Nobody knows how bad the forest fires are going to get in this state, but everybody agrees they're going to get worse before they get better. Of course, the economic outlook here is not bright for residents. Oh, California is a very rich state, but it has trouble paying its bills. It's behind on pension liabilities and has the nation's largest welfare program. California has 12% of the nation's population, but it has a third of the welfare recipients. At 16%, more people live in poverty in California than any other state when you factor in the cost of living. And that's just a shame. And it's a vicious cycle here too. California has the highest taxes in the nation by far and the highest home prices by far. And that just puts people into poverty more and more. And then they need more state assistance to get by. And that furthers the problem of finding enough money to keep people out of poverty. One study showed one in four residents here are seriously considering moving out of the state. A quarter worry about housing costs. Almost half of residents here say they don't believe in the American dream anymore and nearly two in three adults worry their kids are going to be worse off than they are. What the hell? In case you haven't heard, last year, for the first time, more people left California than moved in. California's population declined by 182,000 people in 2020, and that's the first time there's been a decrease in the population here since 1900. And for the first time since the gold rush, Californian-born residents make up a majority of the state's population. That basically means not a lot of new people are coming in. But the good news for California is this, I guess. 
According to the latest census, the people leaving are lower and middle class residents who can't afford to live here anymore. A lot of them are Hispanics, many of them Mexicans, who are leaving the state because of a loss of manufacturing and farming jobs. The ones coming to the state for the most part are higher earners who can afford to purchase a home somehow. This chart shows that trend. And another group moving here in droves are Asians. Today the Asian population of California is growing twice as fast as the Hispanic population. And I'm sure you've heard, the homeless are coming here too. LA County has an estimated 50,000 homeless people, and that ranks as the third highest number of homeless people in the world. So it's fair to say California has more homeless people than anywhere else on earth. For many, it's a lifestyle choice, since the state caters to them and gives them things that people with actual jobs and houses don't get. But a big part of the homeless problem is because people can't afford to live here anymore. The average home in California is now more than $800,000, people. There's been a petition circulating throughout the far northern California counties for a long time. They want to secede from California and start a new state. For these older, mostly white, and often poor people, they're just sick of being lumped into the rest of the state. Eastern Oregon wants to join them. Now, is California ever going to figure things out? Not likely. The politics here have been all over the place forever now. This is a state that was second in line to legalize abortion, but then they outlawed gay marriage twice. It's a state that outlawed affirmative action, but they pride themselves in being a sanctuary state for poor minorities and the homeless. Sure, it's a very wealthy state and it's very innovative, but based on the number of people leaving, the future here is in doubt. Okay, enough with all that bad California news. It's time for some California facts, everyone. I like facts. See? Now, if you move to California for some reason, you need to know some facts, right? That way you're knowledgeable about your future home. Stuff like this. Inviting beaches. Paradise for sportsmen. Rendezvous for romance under sunny skies. This is the lure of the West along the golden shores of California. California has 39 million people. If it were a country, it would be the fourth biggest country in the Western Hemisphere. 90% of all wine made in the nation is grown in California. And a lot of the people here have to drink it to deal with living here, I'll tell you that. Despite being so far inland, Stockton is a major port. That's because of rivers, people. With an economy of 3.2 trillion, California has the world's fifth biggest economy. You knew that. The San Francisco Bay Area is home to five of the world's 10 largest companies and four of the world's 10 richest people. One third of all Asians in the United States are in California. Illegal aliens make up 8% of California's population. It's also estimated that 10% of Californians don't speak English at all. Three in four babies born in California are a minority. Does that make them a minority? I don't get it. It is a fact that California has the best Mexican food in the world, even better than in Mexico. For the Restaurante Mexicano de Alberto. Tacos. On Highland Avenue in San Bernardino. Abajo tenemos unos tacos geniales. Es el Restaurante Mexicano de Alberto. Los Angeles County is the most populous county in the nation. There's more people in LA County than in 42 other states. Here's how massive California's economy is. Agriculture is only 1% of the state's economy, but California still has the highest agricultural output of any other state. About 45% of California is covered by forests. California also has the oldest, biggest, and largest trees in the whole nation. This state has the lowest and highest elevations in the lower 48. Death Valley is the lowest at 290 feet below sea level. Mount Whitney is the highest point in the country at 15,000 feet. And the distance between them is only 90 miles. That's crazy. The hottest temperature in the world was recorded in Death Valley when it was 134 degrees once. And the lowest temperature ever recorded here was in Nancy Pelosi's bedroom. California is the only state to have hosted both the Summer and Winter Olympics. The average teacher in California makes $85,000 a year. Teachers in North Carolina are like, what? Don't worry though, 
85K does not go very far in the state. You may not know it, but San Francisco is the coldest big city in the country. Even during the summers here, the average high is only about 61 degrees. 1,700 tons of radioactive waste is stored at the San Onofre Nuclear Power Plant, which also sits in an area with a history of tsunamis. Uh-oh. Did you know California invented the computer? OMG, shut up! Mappy, we know that aliens invented computers. Come on now. For that mistake, I'm going to punish you. You're going to live in Stockton for one whole week. No! Yeah, I'm going to stick you in a motel there too. A bad one. Well, while Mappy ponders his punishment, it's time to do some California trivia, everyone. Let's call some people from California and ask them some tough California trivia questions. And this will give you a chance to meet some people from California before you move there yourself. I like California trivia. See? So joining me right now is one of my good friends, Kevin, who we went to high school together and we had a TV show together and uh, he's a big part of my life growing up in California. What's up, Kevin? What's up, Nick? It's good to see you. You too, man. You're all pixelated because I think your kids are all streaming Roblox right now, huh? No, I'm just hiding my identity. But yeah, it's probably <laughs> that. <laughs> all right. Okay, so I'm going to ask you five questions about California and we're going to see how many you can get right, okay? Okay. Sure. All right. Now, you grew up there, so you better get some of these right. I hope so. Um, yeah. Okay, question one. Within five percentage points, what percentage of households in California do not speak English? 50%? <laughs> it seems like it. <laughs> 25 probably, but it feels like 50. All right, David, thank you for joining me. Now, you grew up in California, and you spent – practically your whole life there. So I'm hoping that you might be able to answer some trivia questions about California. What do you think? Sounds good. All right. So the first question is within 5%, what percentage of households in California don't speak English? Wow. Okay. In California, let, I, I want to say 45%. <laughs> it kind of seems like it. Um, it's actually 30%. So um, yeah, three in 10 people in California, or three in 10 households in California do not speak English. Okay, gotcha. Okay, question two. You better get this one right. What's the biggest county in the nation? That's B County all the way. Yeah, San, San Bernardino, Bernardino County. I'm going to go with San Bernardino. It is San Bernardino. Yeah. Okay, question three. Which county in California has the most tourism of all counties in, in California? I want to say LA County, but it's probably more like Orange County because of Disneyland, which I think Disneyland falls in Orange County. So I think I'm going to go with that, but I'm probably wrong, but... I'm going to go with L.A. just because they have LAX, big international airport. They've got a lot of people flooding in there, lots of people coming just to see everything that we have. So I'm going to say L.A. County. It is L.A. County. Yeah. OK, so question number four, you have two out of three. Who is the last and probably the last ever Republican governor to be elected in California? Man, I want to say Jerry Brown. I may be way off here with my names because I was a little younger. I want to say Jerry Brown. Maybe Wilson. Wilson? Yeah, it's Pete Wilson. Was it was Pete yeah. Wilson. Okay. 1994. Okay, cool. So the year I graduated high school. Okay, David, so you have two out of four right. Here's the last question. Question five is, what is California's biggest export? We have a lot of orange groves. Let's say oranges. Uh, I should probably know this. Why don't I? And you're going to say it, and I know I'm going to be like, I knew that, but whatever. No, actually, it's actually, a, the, it just became electric cars this year. No, because mm -hmm. of Tesla? That's our I biggest think, export? I think it's not just Tesla. I think there's other electric cars that are produced. Well, so I know Tesla, Ford, but like, and, and yeah, I know. But, they, but a lot of those plants aren't in Cali. 
anyways. Well, I don't know. I just read it. Like, like it's like five point seven billion dollars. It used to be uh, computers, and then before that, it was almonds. Silicon Valley, yes, um, yes. But yeah. uh, it's electric cars. And now it's time for the history of California in three minutes or less. A long time ago, before you even thought about moving here, California wasn't even California. It was alien. <laughs> then they left, and then it was all Native Americans and Mexicans. There were an estimated 300,000 Native Americans living in California when Europeans first made their way to the state. Yes, California's early days were populated by Native Americans, Mexicans, and the Spanish. The Spanish were the first Europeans to come here. In 1542, their first ship landed in present-day San Diego. Eventually, the Spanish would build 21 missions up and down the California coast. But as the Spanish were moving around in the state, the English also wanted a piece of California. In 1579, about 25 years after Spain first came, a man named Francis Drake made it to California, and he claimed it for England. There was a big tug-of-war between Spain and England for California for a long time. Spain won. Spain was also running things south of the border, too. This Spanish conquistador, Hernan Cortes, conquered the Aztecs in 1521. And for 300 years, Mexico was a Spanish colony, too. So Spain was running the show all over the western coast of North America, right? But then in 1821, Mexico was like, enough is enough. And they beat Spain up and they gained their independence. They were their own country again. Yay! Mexico didn't just get Mexico back, they got California too. So, beginning in 1821, California was controlled by Mexico. This went on for about 25 years. Mexico controlled California, and they built a bunch of rancheros here. By about 1845, there were only about 100,000 Native Americans left. Two-thirds had either been killed, died of disease, or fled. Outside of the Native Americans, there were about 8,000 or so Mexicans here and a few hundred American pioneers. And this was all in what was called Alta California. So there weren't that many people here at the time. One of the American pioneers who settled here was a man named John Marsh. He was a very educated man and a very wealthy rancher. Turns out he would have a big role in California becoming a state. He moved to California in 1836 and he opened up a big ranch with a doctor's office on it. He was sort of alone out there, and he looked around and was like, this is awesome. He saw how much potential California had, but he worried the territory would be overtaken by the Russians or the English or the French. He was like, we need to make this place a state now. It's awesome, everybody. So he started lobbying the US government. He started writing all these letters, and he was like, send more pioneers out to California. He was going on and on about how great the climate was and how amazing the soil was and how much land there was in Alta, California. Very soon after that, the wagon started rolling west and thousands of new settlers moved here. Well, that didn't go over very well with the Mexicans. They were like, hey, this is our land. And by the way, you just did this in Texas too. Stay out. Well, we didn't stay out. so. The United States and Mexico got into a big fight called the Mexican-American War. For two years, Mexico and the U.S. fought over a bunch of land. Eventually, we won the war, and Mexico ceded a whole bunch of land over the U.S., including all of California. It was a great victory. Yay! That war ended in 1848, and two years later, in 1850, California was admitted as a state. And then there was a gold rush, and then there was a big earthquake, and then they made a bunch of movies, and then there was a bunch of riots, and then a bunch of homeless people moved in, and then all the sensible people left. And that really happened. Okay, so we learned a lot about California, didn't we? Now, is this taking to continue to see everybody leave? How are they going to handle all the people that are going to other states for cheap land and less drama and a new start in life? How is California going to handle climate change? And is California ever going to have a Republican governor again? The answer to that last question is no, never. The state has changed permanently and it is no longer a place for people to move to for opportunity and cheap land and a new start in life. Now, if you're one person that's thinking about moving to California, I say don't. But if you do move here, one day you're probably going to look back on this video and say, I should have listened. California is not a very forgiving place, nor it is one that I should have moved to. Don't say I didn't warn you.
California is so screwed. Come here and you'll see why it's shitty and understand why they're leaving. Everyone is so broke and they're so busy. There's no time to sit down and relax. Move here and you will one day be so poor. So since 2010, that city has just completely crumbled, especially Santa Monica, Venice, downtown. Uh, as I mentioned in the email, I um, a couple of years ago, unfortunately, had to spend some time on the street for a little while. So, um, yeah, I would know pretty well how what's going on. So to give people an idea. So by goddamn mess, what are some things that you are fed up with that you're like on the fence, maybe going to leave L.A. forever? Um, so it's the blatant corruption, the socioeconomic disparity. A lot of reasons why I decided to leave uh, California in general. Uh, everything from identity politics and politics to the traffic, overcrowding. Um, this is probably going to sound a little bit racist, <laughs> but there is a huge illegal immigration problem there. And the very first night I park on the street and go to bed, come out the next morning, start my car. And it sounds like I started an airplane and some guy had come lifted my car. catalytic converter. Yeah. Yeah. Very first night. And forget about calling the police because they take like hours. OK. <laughs> and so you got to just handle it yourself. It's like the Wild West, but with a bunch of people that don't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to describe it i mean it's it's crazy expensive it's you know there's everybody you got all running all these people who like they're, they're fake people you know i mean I, i've been trying to kind of like get out and just kind of hang out in places and it's just really expensive it's several hundred dollars just to go out for a night you know so i'm from i remember from pennsylvania i remember it being much more cheaper i remember it being like a, a better crowd of people the two main, there's two main problems with LA right now. It's uh, completely inept um, and corrupt politicians. Um, incompetence would be the, the word that's going around. Um, unfortunately, people have been voting for liberal policies for the last 30, 40 years, and now you're starting to see the effects of those policies. Uh, number two is, and the most pressing and important problem there is the homeless situation. It not only is it a um, city pro uh, problem, it's a societal crisis as well. Um, these people, now here's what Ellie likes to do. They just like to keep throwing money and housing at the problem. Thinking, well, if we build housing and if we put these people in to housing, that'll solve the problem. That's not going to solve the problem because you're not solving the core of the problem. The core of the problem is that these people have drug problems, alcohol problems. They come from very broken families. They have mental, I, I mean, there's schizos out there. There's people are not being helped. If, if anything, they're being forgotten. And I would know that because it happened to me. Thankfully, um, I met a pastor that took, that gave a crap about me and gave, you know, and, and gave me a chance. And I took that chance and I got off the street and made something of myself. But there's 90% of the people that will never get off of the street ever. And it's unfortunate. So that would say, I would say those are the two biggest problems that LA faces right now. So, so tell me a little bit about California. So you grew up in, in the LA area, you moved away and then you came back and then you were out of there like less than a year later. What, what made you decide like, you know, I gave this another chance. I'm out of here for good. And as California started to wear on us, uh, the high density people everywhere, high taxes, the cost of living was insane and it got worse while we were there. People were taking advantage of COVID to sky skyrocket prices. I thought it would be the opposite. I thought because people aren't making payments correctly or they're needing government help that people would look at that as an opportunity to maybe be a little bit nicer with their pricing. Not at all. It got worse. Or at least where I was, it got worse in the San Fernando Valley. And uh, as soon as an opportunity presented itself to get out of California, uh, we took it and I was able to take my job with me, which was incredible. But with the high prices, the overbearing restrictions, uh, Gavin Newsom, you know, one minute we're, we're locked down, the next minute we're not. And then he's going to get recalled and everything's opened up again. And then he's uh, looking pretty strong in the recall effort and he's locking everything back down again. And then they started, they started having the whisperings of uh, vaccine mandates and vaccine passports in order to even go inside anywhere. 
and we saw that come in pretty early so we said you know what let's maybe get out of there before that happens so california just became overbearing too many people way too dense uh a homeless problem and, and and just filthiness everywhere exorbitant pricing i mean gas prices were astronomical housing prices were astronomical it just wasn't worth it so we we decided let's go to some part of the country it's more affordable less restrictive where we can actually just be a family and not worry day to day so we got out of there we had yeah good for you we had planned to be there for two years so that was our mindset things would be good enough to be there for two years and in less than a year we're like we can't take this we're gone you couldn't even make it two years yeah. so what advice would you give people who are thinking of moving to california i mean i harp on it all the time and tell them don't go there but a lot of people still do go there um especially wealthier people who think that they can afford it, which sometimes they can. Um, as somebody who grew up in the LA area that left and is never moving back, probably, what advice would you give people who are thinking like, maybe California's calling my name? Sure. Well, first of all, see a psychiatrist. And maybe they can give you some advice about uh, how to better critically think about decision making. Um, but if you really, truly feel like you need to be there, you have to be there, whatever the case may be, the first thing I would I would say is make sure you have a good job lined up. You're going to be paying way more in rent or, or a mortgage than you've ever even imagined, unless you're, you're in like Seattle, New York or San Francisco. It might actually be a little cheaper than those places or Miami. But if you're coming out there, make sure you have a good job. And I don't mean something that, you know, will just get you by because prices for everything are going up constantly. So you think I can afford something now and yeah, maybe I'm just getting by, but in a year or two, you're no longer going to be able to afford it. So a really good job, a really good work lined up is number one. Number two, make sure you're okay with having people everywhere all the time. That was something that we didn't consider with my wife. She grew up in a small Midwestern town and just the sheer amount of people everywhere and the sheer amount of cars everywhere was very overwhelming for her. And me being away from California, even though I grew up there, being away from it from about for about two and a half, three years, when I came back, I felt very overwhelmed. So that's going to be a transition. If you're not used to that, that is definitely going to be a transition. Probably the third thing I would say is get ready for the lifestyle of people there. People there, it's easy to make friends, but everybody has an angle. If you can't offer something to somebody, it's going to be difficult keeping people around. And I know a lot of very lonely people. You've got people everywhere, but yet people are having difficulty keeping good friends in their life and keeping good people in their life. And I know a lot of people that are ha really struggling to date. They'll date somebody they think it's great and they find out they're awful. And that seems to be a common trend. I have friends that born and raised there. They've never left. And they're still calling me saying, I, I don't know why I can't find a good woman. I don't know why I can't find a good man. It's like, cause you live in a black hole called Los Angeles. So that's a, that's a good start there. But why do you think that is? Like, why do you think it's so hard to meet good friends or, or develop a deep relationship in, in California? I think it's the rat race. It's this perception and idea that I have to get ahead. Everybody there struggling, even people that make good money. I have friends that make six figures and they're struggling uh, because they, they want to live a, a lifestyle that's still above their means. We have this idea that if I, if I get a six figure job, that it's, gonna, it's all going to all be great. But then you go buy an apartment or a house you can't afford. You go buy a car you can't afford, you think you can, then all of a sudden at the end of the month, you realize, man, I have nothing left over and I'm having to go to my credit cards to pay for everything. So you're constantly in this rat race of, I need more, I need more. I, people there work exorbitant hours just to make ends meet. Uh, so it turns into this idea of, if you can't make my life better in a way that I think is better, then you're not worth having around because I don't have enough time, I don't have enough resources. So. Yeah. Well, you're, you're, there's a lot of people in line behind you ready to leave the state as well. Um, for the first time ever, California lost more people, um, a couple hundred thousand people more uh, left than moved to California. Uh, so net migration is the thing, you know, and if you look at the statistics on the growth for California, it was like 10%, 20%, 30%, 20% every decade up until like 2000. And then it was like 10%. And then it was 6% and it's probably going to be like 0% by, by the next census uh, in 10 years. Cause it's just, people are just like, they, they're fed up. Um, a lot of people that most of the migration is international migration, Mexico and China really. Um, 
And there are studies that show that um, the, the amount of people that are moving to California, um, most of the people leaving are middle to lower class. Most of the people moving in are high earners who can clearly afford it. Uh, but but there's a lot more poor people leaving than rich people moving in. So makes sense. Wow. I did not know that, but it makes sense for sure. Wow. And, you know, we have such a, a major issue um, infrastructure wise and with the homeless. Um, I feel like we're going a lot after factory warehouse type, uh, um, you know, urbanization, right. Versus like, like maybe say, Hey, let's, let's build some movie studios, you know, not just in LA County, but at San Bernardino County, you know, and let's actually go after the creative sector and, and, and put some, some installations where, you know, we could actually add job, you know, and, and build, uh, or help, you know, uh, uh, boost the economy in these areas that really are just purely solely dependent on, you know, warehouse, you know, criminal reform type industry. And, and then, you know, and then you get the rhetoric growing, you know, and then people go, well, you know, we know why that's happening. Da, da, da. And they try to talk down on California and it's, I, I, it frustrates me. Um, so that would be like the biggest thing is I wish somebody would just kind of change the, the narrative and, and focus on what, what the pros are here in California and what we have done and what we are as a, as a, as a people and stop like trying to divide us. But of course that's happening on a national level too, you know? So I think, you know, because California is like one of the biggest economies uh, in the world, um, it's just, we, of course, we're like always going to be, um, singled out and, you know, kind of, uh, looked at in a, in a certain way. So, uh, I, so it, that's an interesting question and I just said a whole bunch and I'm not sure how uh, coherent it all is, but all I can say is that I, I do, I do love the state of California. My biggest issue right now is those things I mentioned and the fact that it's really expensive I'm not a homeowner. I'm pretty much a renter. That's my biggest frustration is not being able to purchase, you know, um, and, and, and where I want to purchase too. Right. Um, and that's what, that's, what's real frustrating. I mean, even in San Bernardino, dude, like houses are really, really expensive. So it's really, that's been my biggest, um, issue with, with California is, is that, we need to do more for those of us who have been residents here our whole lives, you know, and, and stop always giving into, you know, kind of like capitalism, you know, because yeah, our land is worth a lot. I get that, but let's try to help our people that have been, uh, have lived here our whole lives. You know, uh, that would be nice. <laughs> hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. And are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation.